Hey, it's been quite a while, which I seem to say in every single video now. But yeah, it's been like a month or so. But I'm done with uni now. Uni finished at the end of May? It's still the end of May. It finished like a week ago. I don't know, I've lost track of time. I've just been holed up in my room reading. Whereas most people are outside in the sun. Mm -mm books and movies that's my priority right now so <laughs> yeah so yeah i've basically just been catching up with all the reading that i didn't get to do during my uni year which is fun and i read quite a bit so i thought i would share that with you i read magnus chase and the ship of the dead and it was really good and it's rick riordan like i think i've got to the point where i just can't say anything new about rick riordan i've been reading his books for what is it like 10 years now Jesus, I don't know. A long time, anyway. Um, but I just, I really admire him, not just as a writer and and everything, but the fact that like when he started the whole Percy Jackson mythology series, it was quite um, generic YA. I mean, it was mostly white, mostly straight. And then as the series has got bigger, he's been allowed to kind of expand on that. And he's now really like um, at the forefront of including diversity, like he's um, got this, I think it's like a publishing company, but basically he kind of takes um, diverse authors writing diverse stories um, under his wing um, about mythology and things like that. And he's just really interesting and really cool and he's a good egg basically. So I will always be supporting his books, not only because he's a good person, but also because they're really good. So yeah. I then read Black Hole, which is a really cool graphic -y novel type <laughs> graphic -y novel. It's a graphic novel. Um and it's the art is quite unique and striking and stuff. But basically if anyone's seen Pardon me, <laughs> if anyone's seen the film It Follows, it was loosely based on this graphic novel. So it follows a group of teens as a weird, sexually contaminated disease kind of runs through this small town and it goes into like, the lives of who it affects and who it might affect. And I really enjoyed the atmosphere of it, just created by the art and the stories and everything. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I also read Spellbook of the Lost and Found by Moira Fowley Doyle, I think, I hope that's right. Um, I really enjoyed this, it's basically these three friends um, find a spell book and kind of cast a spell and then things start going missing. Um, then it kind of obviously expands and there are mysteries and other things going on, but I really liked how the plot came together because there are things that in the beginning you think aren't really relevant and won't link up and then at the end they all link up and come together and I really like stories which fuse real life and fantasy elements so apart from like this magic spell book they're just kids that go to school and have crushes and all of this stuff but I really thought it was very like intricately twined together and I just really liked the narrative voice so I would recommend this if you like kind of magic stuff but also you're not into like too high fantasy so it's like a good middle ground it's a blend of like normal YA with like a bit of magic in it then I finally got on the bandwagon and I'm so glad that I did I read Strange the Dreamer and it's amazing it's so good no one told me actually well quite a few people but oh my god it's so good like I got, when I started reading this, I got the feeling that I got when I was first reading Harry Potter and that is like the biggest compliment I can give. Like all of the characters, the setting, the way it was written, it's just so enchanting and I love it and it doesn't go where you think it's gonna go, well I don't know, but it's just, it's so not typical of kind of YA, I've read quite a lot of YA fantasy, I've read quite a lot of YA dystopia, YA, uh, no I can't think of another genre, but it's quite, all the characters are so individual and it's so beautifully written that I just, it just stands out like way above the rest, it's so good and I'm so excited for the next one to come out this year and I love it. If you haven't read it, do yourself a favour. I got to the point where I was about 100 pages in and then I got to a really stressful bit at uni where my second essay of the year was due in and I was always stressed and tired so I wouldn't let myself read this book. I Don't get me wrong, I wanted to read it, I wanted to carry on and find out what happened to all of my babies but 
I didn't want to read it when I was stressed and tired because I wanted to give my full attention because it's just that good. I wanted to like appreciate every single bit of it. Ah, oh, it's so good. I already want to read it again. I also read The Boyfriend List by E. Lockhart, and I love E. Lockhart's writing, I always will. Her style is so readable. I never mean that as like a, oh, it's so easy and simple and because obviously I can appreciate beautiful prose, like Strange Dreamer, please read it. Um, but also I really appreciate an engaging narrative and an engaging narrative voice, and that's what I found um, with this. So it basically follows um, Ruby? Yeah, and um, she kind of has, well, she starts seeing a shrink for a certain reason and then that shrink asks her to make a list of all the boyfriends but this list also includes like crushes and near misses and like things that she doesn't really count in her head but to kind of work out what she prioritises in her life. It sounds really weird when I say it like that but it's just a fun kind of contemporary um, thing with a bit of a twist so I really liked that um, and I think there are like three sequels so I probably will check those out sometime soon. I then picked up this anthology called Slasher Girls and Monster Boys which is a um, collection of 12? 12, 12, 12 or 13? Give me a second. Ugh, doesn't say, okay. Fourteen um, short stories by different authors, different YA authors, um, but some of them are quite well known. So there's Jay Kristoff and April Genevieve Tchulk, uh, Lee Bardugo, Marie Lou. We well, you know, yeah, those people. Um, and I don't know, like I, I enjoyed it, but I was a bit underwhelmed. I think I've built up kind of a resistance to some types of horror, and I don't tend to read horror that much. Like I. have if I ever engage with it, it tends to be movies or TV shows. And there were a few stories that were effective in this, but I can pick out maybe like three or four that have kind of stuck with me and that I remembered. And out of 14, that's kind of not that great of a ratio. Um, but also I think maybe I just wasn't in the mood for something like this because it's summer and it's bright outside and this is quite creepy and dark. So maybe if I read it more around like winter, October time, I'd you know, engage with it more, but um, the general atmosphere of it is good and, and there are some like really good prose in it, but I just don't think I connected with any of them on like a strong level, if that makes sense, and I guess that's hard to do in a short story, but I, I just kind of wanted a bit more from it, but like I said, I will probably try reading bits of it again come winter and the creepy time. <laughs> and then as well, uh, See, I don't know whether to talk about this now and make this video like 20 minutes long or if I should make a separate video on it. I might do a separate video. Mm. Mm. Okay, basically the book is Stags and I have very conflicting feelings about it but then I feel mean doing a whole video that's probably going to be negative. I'll do it. Okay. Look out for that video. Thanks so much for watching this wrap up. That's the word. It's been so long that I forgot what it's called. Um, and I'll see you soon with another video. Bye.